let me uh, first of all follow up on uh, what the Minister of State of Nigeria has said. Yeah. And I will start with uh, some examples from my own region. Recently, as you know, in Niger, important oil discoveries have been made. In Mauritania and Senegal, the third largest oil gas has been discovered. And these three countries have gone from the era of using wood, destroying their forests, using biomass. And for the first time in their national histories, they, have, they are going through an era of availability of gas and oil that they used to, to pay or not pay because they did not have the resources. What shall we tell them? They are asking my country in Niger and in Mauritania for help because we have an experience in the area of oil and gas. They are asking for cooperation in this area. What shall, what shall we tell them? That look, there are the international commitments, agreements that, sorry, you have come too late. We cannot help you, and you should, and you must abide by the new rules. So we are balancing all that, and we are trying to reconcile our duties and international responsibilities with the need for fairness, for inclusiveness towards these countries that have emerged in the area of oil and gas, and we should not just tell them we are sorry. So, Minister, uh, if I may add on that follow-up, you think by denying them that opportunity that creates an, a, a, a potential conflict or a fault line in the region? Absolutely. I mean, I, I believe sincerely that with these new tools, and I'm talking about important oil discoveries in Niger and important gas discoveries in Mauritania and Senegal. This will help give a new impetus to, the, to their national development. And when you talk about new possibilities for a new momentum to national development, you will be fighting directly or indirectly in this area of the Sahel. The president of Nigeria was talking about uh, so wisely this morning. You will, be, you will be contributing to fighting terrorism in the area, international crime in the area, illegal immigration in the area. Those are tools that can be... So you, you have and you must include all these parameters in the definition of your global position on oil and gas and on the global transition to a new system of energy. So this is what I wanted to say. And second, on the, completely on the other side, let me say we are a Mediterranean country. We are a gas-producing country. We are asked by our partners in Europe more and more to deliver additional quantities of gas all over Europe, from many, many countries. How are we supposed to do that? Increasing our exports in the field of gas. And I'm telling you about not one or two or three countries, there are many European countries asking for additional uh, supplies. So we have also to reconcile this requirement with our global position on our pension. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I concur. You know, I completely agree with two of them. You know, um, to the extent that all countries should be allowed to design their own transition pathway. 
in my opinion, we must, you know, embrace transition, but we must be allowed to transit at our own pace. We must first of all ensure that we have energy security for Africa before we talk about transition. Already in Africa, we are putting different you know, legal frameworks to see how we can transit at our own pace. But I completely agree with them that we can't transit at the same pace. Every country should be allowed to design its own transition plan. But that transition plan could be you know, tied to the global transition plan. I completely agree with them. Minister Arthur, the final word to you. Absolutely, we are in the same thing. We have state. an absolute consensus here on this issue. Ab absolutely, you have it. Yeah. Uh, I believe that we, uh, we share the, uh, the, the same concerns. We have recently uh, hosted, Algeria has recently hosted the uh, uh, Gas Exporting Countries Forum. And it, it is precisely in the name of these uh, values and principles that have been put forward that we have advocated that speci special consideration should be given to gas in the context of the global transition in the name of fairness and inclusiveness because the gas, this gas summit has come to the conclusion that through gas as a component of the transition, this inclusiveness and this fairness could be and should be assured to all of us. So fairness and just, these are the two major takeaways from this discussion, that it's important that this transition uh, is done, keeping in mind the global goals, but it's very important that it's, it doesn't create a, a, a polarization or a further divide between those who have and those who don't. And that's very clear from this panel. I, would want, I want to thank all of you for sharing your suggestions, your views, and being candid about the issues that you all are facing in your respective regions. Thanks a lot. A big hand for this panel for sharing the thoughts, and thank you so much.